Hello everyone, my name is Danny and I was an active Latter-day Saint for 60 years. Today I want to compare how women are viewed in the Bible and how they're compared or how they're viewed in the Book of Mormon. In the entirety of the Bible, some women are identified as healers and warriors, business leaders, diplomats, judges, musicians, disciples, and even prophets. Two of the books of the Old Testament were, were written uh, after the name of women, Esther and Ruth. And the men who wrote the other books of the Bible certainly felt free to mention women by name and to write concerning their achievements. In the New Testament, it becomes obvious how Jesus treated women with so much respect and often as equals to men. Some of the most poignant interactions in the four Gospels are with Jesus and women. In fact, Jesus' longest recorded conversation was with the Samaritan woman at the well, recorded in John chapter 4. It's a beautiful encounter. The story is rich. It is a rich example of like love and truth, redemption and acceptance. Jesus often crossed the cultural boundaries of his time between men and women by his acceptance of many women as his disciples. Some of them traveled with him and ministered to him like Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, Salome, and sisters like Martha and Mary, and then, of course, his mother Mary. Women were present at Jesus' crucifixion, and they were the last to leave the foot of the cross. They were the first to witness the Lord's resurrection and the first to tell others about it. From the Apostle Paul, even he regularly ministered in the gospel alongside women. He often applauded their dedication and faithfulness to the cause of the gospel. It's clear that God of the Bible elevates the status of womanhood, especially in the apostolic record of the New Testament. Now, let's uh, consider the women of the Book of Mormon, which has over 500 pages, spanning over 3,000 years of history Nephite, Lamanite, and Jaredite history and their entire population of millions. Considering all that time, history, and population, how many women in the Book of Mormon are mentioned by name? Astonishingly, only six. It was very noticeable to me when I read the Book of Mormon over and over again in the, while I was a member of the LDS Church, the lack of personal names for women. Three of those six women were simply just mentioned by name and direct, taken directly as a reference from the Bible. Sarah, the wife of Abraham, Eve, the wife of Adam, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. The remaining three women, originating from the Book of Mormon, who played minimal roles, were Sariah, the wife of Lehi, Abish, a Lamanite, a Lamanite convert, and Isabel, called the harlot. As you can see, there are almost complete silence on women in the Book of Mormon, and they, are basically, they basically play unimportant roles. There are references to other females in the narrative, but none of them have proper names. While Nephi uses his own name in the phrase, I, Nephi, over and over, 86 times, he never mentions his, wife, his wife's name once. Unlike the Bible, there is virtually nothing mentioned about marriage or family life in the Book of Mormon. It seems that women were primarily accessories to men dependent upon them, not only for survival, but also for identity. All of this, to me at least, is strong evidence that the Book of Mormon was not written by many different authors, as the LDS apologists like to argue, but by one man who obviously wasn't interested in the matters or needs of women. When, he read, when I read the Book of Mormon, the pattern that strikes me again and again are the ways in which female characters are portrayed and objectified. I'm going to give you some examples here of what I mean. First of all, women in the Book of Mormon are treated as instruments for men's own purposes. They seem to primarily exist to bear children, to, prov to provide food, and to provide sexual pleasure. For instance, in 1 Nephi chapter 7, verse 1, it says, quote, It was not meet for him, Lehi, that he should take his family into the wilderness alone, but that his sons should take daughters to wife, 
and that they might rise up seed unto the Lord in the promised land. So plainly stated here, the purpose of bringing the women out of Jerusalem across the women to a new land was so they could reproduce and perpetuate Lehi's lineage. And then 1 Nephi 16, verse 7, quote, I, Nephi, took one of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also my brother took the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also Zoram took the eldest daughter of Ishmael to wife. These daughters have no identity or choice in the matter. They are distinct from one another. They aren't distinct from one another and don't even rate enough to have proper names. And then women are treated as if they have no autonomy and they are used as pawns to save the lives of cowardly men. Mosiah chapter 23 verse 33 Quote, Amulon did plead with the Lamanites, and he also sent forth their wives, who were the daughters of the Lamanites, to plead with their brethren that they should not destroy their husbands, end quote. And then Mosiah chapter 19, verse 13, quote, Those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the Lamanites that they would not, would not slay them, end quote. Here we have fathers willing to exchange for their freedom the sexual, sexual availability of their fair daughters to their enemies. And then, you know, treating women simply as sex objects. Here's an example in Mosiah chapter 20, verse 3 through 5, quote, And now the priests of King Noah, being ashamed to return to the city of Nephi, yea, also fearing that the people would slay them, therefore they durst not return to their wives and their children. And having tarried in the wilderness... And having discovered the daughters of the Lamanites, they laid and watched them. And when there, there were but few of them gathered together to dance, they came forth out of their secret places and took them and carried them into the wilderness. Yea, twenty and four of the daughters of the Lamanites they did carry into the wilderness. End quote. So these wicked priests decided to abduct Lamanite young women because they needed their sexual services and their female labor. And they quickly replace their former wives with these new wives. And then, you know, finally, um, well, there's another example of uh, women's feelings not being taken into consideration. For example, this is a, a pretty well-known story in the Book of Mormon of Ammon defending the king's uh, flocks in the field. And this is recorded, this comment is recorded, recorded in Alma chapter 17, verse 24. King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon and caused that his bands should be loosed and he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. And finally, there's this ugly scene at the end of the Book of Mormon where women are tortured, raped, murdered, and even cannibalized. It's a pretty ugly scene. Um, in Moroni chapter 9, verse 9, quote, Many of the daughters of the Lamanites have been taken prisoners, and after depriving them of that which was most dear and precious above all things, which is chastity and virtue. Kind of disgusting. Well, it's obvious that the author of the Book of Mormon didn't think the experience or the value of women had any particular importance. And But, you know, I want to be fair. Uh, this critique does not mean that certain portrayals of the women in the Book of Mormon are universally negative. I mean, there were a few positive examples. Nephi's unnamed wife pled for his life and for his safety. Abish, the Lamanite, was a heroine in the story. An unnamed wife of Lamoni was very loyal and faithful. And the unnamed mothers of the armies of Helaman had powerful faith. So the book at least gives limited credit to these few women. But overall, the Book of Mormon consistently shows that women are not real people at all. Instead, they are objects to be used with very varying degrees by men. Honestly, if I was a Latter-day Saint woman in the church reading the Book of Mormon, I would be put off by the irrelevancy of the female characters. The whole story reeks of patriarchy, which was pervasive in the 19th century when the Book of Mormon was written by Joseph Smith, Jr., who himself had dozens of wives, many who were married to other men at the time and others who were virtually just teenagers. The God of the Book of Mormon does not appear to be the God of the Bible, which is yet another proof that the Book of Mormon was a fabrication of one man's misogynistic imagination and 
we know who that was. Yes, Joseph Smith Jr. Something to consider. Check out other videos that I have, like this one at TalkingToMormons.com or on uh, YouTube. And please share with your families and friends. And until next time, God bless.